Hi, my name is Zach Miner. I'm the sales engineer here at Vortec. And I'm Steve Prowse. I'm an application engineer here at ITW Vortec. And today we're going to be discussing our AC lines and why you would want to choose one of them versus the traditional EC coolers that Vortex has offered. So we're going to go over our different models. Um, we have five of them here at Vortec, and we're also going to go over the benefits to each of them. So we'll start with our traditional Vortex AC, lead into the electric AC, followed by the Haslock AC, then the Atex AC, and lastly, the Protex AC. So Steve, let's say I'm interested in one of our AC lines, and I'm not real sure which one is best for my operation. Where would I get started? So the first thing uh, that you would need to do is uh, either call the office, talk to one of our application engineers here, or go, go online to uh, Vortech.com and complete the online uh, questionnaire. Basically, the online heat load questionnaire uh, is going to ask all the questions that we need to know as far as size of the cabinet, uh, the amount of uh, uh, the compressed air pressure, compressed air temperature. Um, we need to know things about uh, you know what components are inside the cabinet, and we take all that data and. Uh, we use that to select the appropriate cooler for the application. Perfect. So each one of these are precisely designed for specific applications. That's correct. Um, as you mentioned, we do have uh, a few different varieties here. <clears throat> we'll start with the Vortex AC. The Vortex AC, we have them in NEMA 12, NEMA 4, and 4X. It's a sleek design. These units all have mechanical thermostats. The mechanical thermostat is just that. It doesn't require any electricity. So the main benefit is the ease of installation. Um, we can typically uh, install any of these coolers within say five or 10 minutes. Um, it's just a matter of basically um, drilling a hole in the cabinet. It's a standard inch and a half uh, uh, electrical knockout, which is a trade size. Um, you know, the cooler goes into the cabinet, it's got a lock ring, you put that on there and you supply compressed air to it. Um, these coolers, they're UL rated, NEMA 4, 4X. We do have NEMA 12 models. We also have some ATEX uh, <clears throat> models, some Protex models, and our standard uh, hazardous location model. And we can talk a little bit about those later. So I go through, I fill out the sheet or the form online it goes to calculating my exact application and which one of these is best for me. So we kind of talked about the regular Vortex AC. Why would it lead me to an electric Vortex AC? So the, uh, the Vortex AC with the mechanical thermostat, it does require between 90 and 100 PSI to operate properly. If you're less than that or more than that, you may see some um, erratic operation of the thermostat. So if you have pressures anywhere from, let's say, 60 to 80 PSI, then we would steer you towards the electric uh, Vortex AC because of the pressure requirements. Uh, and, you know, at the lower pressure uh, levels, we would just size it accordingly. Okay. And with the electric, does it just plug into traditional outlets or is there special type of equipment needed for the electrical side of it? It does. It comes with a, uh, with a standard uh, 115 volt, uh, 15 amp plug. It can either be plugged into a, a standard outlet or you can cut that off and hardwire it in. Um, we do offer these in uh, both 115 volt and 230 volt models. Perfect. Okay, so these are both very similar just depending on the pressure, mm -hmm. right? So let's say I, neither of these is my option and it comes out to be a Haslock. Mm -hmm. Why would a Haslock come into play? So when you talk about the hazardous location units, they're a little unique. They're going into environments that, uh, where there's either explosive uh, materials present normally, or it could be that if there's a, a, an event that happens, then you're, you're gonna be exposed to explosive uh, materials. With these units, they have to be uh, coupled with a, uh, what we call a purge system. Now we don't actually sell the purge systems. That would be something you'd have to purchase from a third party. But uh, all of the other enclosure coolers have what we call a pressure vent assembly built into them. So when you mount that 
cooler on a sealed cabinet, it's going to pressurize the cabinet, which is beneficial because it, it keeps anything from outside of the cabinet from getting into the cabinet. Um, with the, uh, any of the hazardous location models, whether it be the Haslock, the Atex, or the uh, Protex, since they're used in conjunction with a PERT system, they don't have that feature. So um, the PERT system itself is what maintains the positive pressure on the cabinet and protects the electronics inside the cabinet from any of that explosive gases or vapors from getting into that box. Right. Okay, perfect. So we're, we're basically just looking at the environment and where you would determine going away from a traditional AC line or an electrical AC line moving us onto the Haslock. Correct. Perfect. Okay, and then next let's talk about the ATEX. The ATEX is UL certified. It's certified for ATEX zones 2 and 22. It has all, all the features of the, any of the Vortex ACs. These are very quiet. We offer these in BTU capacities that range from 900 BTUs up to 5,000 BTUs. Most of these units start out, the noise levels can be as low as like 65 uh, dBA, depending on which model it is. So it's gonna be a lot quieter than, say, one of our traditional Vortex coolers. Before we finish up here, kind of run me through some like industry leaders or like typical customers that we would run into with these applications for each model that we've talked about so far? Well, for the NEMA 4, 4X, any manufacturing plant that is in a washdown environment where they have electronics, today everybody's trying to put all these electronics in the smallest closure that they can. So when they do that, you're gonna have you know a lot more heat that you have to deal with so that you're not having issues with you know sensors dropping out or motherboards failing. So just about any application, any industrial application where you have compressed air available, and, and the BTU range is anywhere from 900 BTUs or less, all the way up to 5,000. Same thing with the electric. We've already kind of discussed that. The electric very similar. Very similar. Right. Um, you know, we can use this at lower pressures than, than the other uh, coolers here. The Haslock Vortex AC is designed for Class 1, Division 2, Group A, B, C, and D locations. It also covers uh, Class 2, Division 2, Groups F and G locations and class three locations. And this is when we could potentially have chemicals that could combust right. combining and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. That's correct. Okay. And lastly, but not least with the ATEX. So the ATEX is uh, designed for uh, zones two and 22. It, it's very similar. They're all kind of similar. There's just a little bit different classifications. Then we don't want to forget about the Protex. The Protex models are rated for Class 1, Division 1, groups A, B, C, and D. Class 2, Division 1's groups F and G, and also Class 3 areas. So, Zach, let's talk a little bit about the NEMA uh, ratings. NEMA 12 is... Uh, is dust tight and drip proof. Um, it would be like uh, a general shop environment where you're not exposed to any water spray or anything. Um, the NEMA 4 would be for applications where you're gonna be, where your equipment is gonna be exposed to water spray. Um, NEMA 4X is basically the same thing, but it's also corrosion resistant. So a typical NEMA 4X location would be a beverage plant or a food plant where you know they're constantly sanitizing and, and hosing down their equipment to make sure there's no uh, uh, no bacteria growth or anything like that. Um, the hazardous locations those get a little bit more involved. I'm not going to go into too much detail with those but uh, we have all of those covered. So let's kind of get into the benefits of just overall why would someone want to purchase an AC versus a traditional enclosure cooler from us? So the main reasons are gonna be um, ease of install. Um, there's a lot less involved with installing these. Um, you know, the thermos, these all have thermostats, so the thermostats are all integrated into these units. You don't have to do any additional wiring or anything like that. Um, another uh, great benefit is, you know, these units are gonna be uh, 
28% quieter than any of our standard uh, Vortex ACs. That's going to be, you know, the big thing. Um, and, and, that, and that's traditionally something that we've ran into in the past, right? Where someone would buy a traditional enclosure cooler and come back to us and say, hey, it's just really, really loud. That's correct. They are running, uh, they are using compressed air. So, you know, it really all depends on the ambient uh, noise level where where the unit's installed. But I mean, if it's in a, a quieter type area, you're definitely going to want to go with one of these Vortex ACs because it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot quieter. Perfect. What about like the cost of operating? So, you know, I've got my initial cost uh, of the product, whether I decide to go with an enclosure cooler mm -hmm. or with one of our AC lines, mm -hmm. right? What about once I'm operating? Is there any benefits to operating? Yes, absolutely. What you don't want to do is have a uh, Vortex cooler that runs all the time. There's a couple of issues with that. One, it's very costly to operate because it's running continuously. Two, it's uh, you could overcool the panel. Now, with all these units, we recommend that you dry your compressed air at a minus 40 degree pressure dew point. If, if a cooler is running continuously and you cool the inside of the cabinet down below the dew point, you could run into issues with condensation forming on the inside of the cabinet, which, as we all know, that's bad. Yeah, electric and water don't right, mix. Right, that's right. So we talked about the ease of insulation <clears throat> and how anybody can pretty much hook up one of our AC lines just depending on knowing how to hook up any type of compressed air to any type of system. With that, let's talk about the actual installation and mounting of these AC lines. Is there a variety of different ways that I can mount these? Uh, yes, any of these can be mounted either in a top orientation or in a side orientation. So it's very simple. Um, you punch the hole in the cabinet, this portion of the cooler goes through the hole. You have a lock ring that goes on. So that's it. It's secured to the cabinet. You supply compressed air to it. You're ready to go. Um, if it needs to be installed on the side of the cabinet, the one thing that you need to keep in mind is the compressed air inlet needs to be pointing upward. And what that does is that orients the shroud so that uh, no water or anything can get back into the, into the cooler and eventually make its way into the cabinet. And that's what we have going on right here is just a traditional way to mount it, right? Yes. So if uh, we just wanted to mount this on the side, do the same thing, make sure that the compressed air is in the upward position and mount it on the side. You got it. Perfect. Okay, so to recap, Steve, let's go over the AC lines one more time, talk about their NEMA ratings as well as the offerings that we have here at Vortex. All right, so again, we have NEMA 12, NEMA 4, NEMA 4X, uh, and the hazardous location units. Um, we have these and uh, they range anywhere from 900 BTUs per hour all the way up to 5,000 BTUs per hour. Um, we didn't talk too much about the 5,000 BTU per hour model, so let's talk a little bit about those. Um, we do have uh, all of these in 5,000 BTU models with the exception of the electric Vortex AC. Um, it only goes up to 2,500 BTUs per hour, but for applications that do require 5,000 BTUs per hour, we could just put a second unit on. Um, all of the other units have that second unit already incorporated into them for the 5,000 BTU per hour models. So what does that look like when you say second unit? So this is a 5,000 BTU per hour Protex Vortex AC. If you look at the bottom, you'll see that it has two Vortex coolers incorporated into it, all in one package. And it's important to remember that all of these, uh, when purchased as a system, come with, uh, with the five micron filter that's gonna uh, basically maintain the, the clean air to the unit. Um, there's no moving parts, nothing to wear out. Um, you just need to maintain that filter. Um, the system also includes ducting kits and, uh, and a couple of other accessories. What is kind of the protocol on the filter? You know, it really all depends on the environment. Um, if it's a new compressed air system, um, you may not have to change the element as much. But uh, all of our filters are auto drain. Um, what that means is uh, if there's any, any water that accumulates in the lines, um, it, gets, uh, it would be separated in the filter. There's a float as the level rises 
um, it will automatically drain. Um, again, we do always recommend that uh, you supply compressed air that's dry to a minus 40 degree pressure dew point. Um, but really filter maintenance is gonna come down to, it's gonna vary depending on the location. So in conclusion, there are several reasons why an end user would want to choose our Vortex AC over our traditional enclosure coolers. The Vortex AC units are rated for hazardous locations. The Vortex AC models are quieter. They are easier to install. They can be top and or side mounted. The Vortex ACs can save operating costs since they are not continuously running. They maintain constant pressure in the cabinet. They can get up to 70 CFM and just one Vortex AC unit instead of purchasing and installing two traditional Vortex coolers. If you would like to learn more about our Vortex AC enclosure cooler line, visit us at www.vortec.com today.